I hear massage service complain all day. I'm broke. I'm dead, 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 dead. And I go, you got a cell phone? And they're like, aw, but that's work. And I go, yes, building a business is in fact work. Sorry. You don't like to work? Guess what? Massage envy? They'll take all the work away. <laughs> They'll do it all for you. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you feel about that? Um, I already started like some kind of like that, like work as a massage movie and yeah. some time work part time at home. Yeah. But I'm kind of like scared because it's in my own home. Yep. I'm scared those different issues. Psycho people that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I had the opposite problem. Women wouldn't come see me because why? Guys. I have a beard. I could be a predator. <laughs> I could be like Kavanaugh. Oh. <laughs> Bad joke, Robert. Bad joke. <laughs> so, a woman came in. She got a mat base session with me. We were like an hour into the session. I was working on her. And she's like, you know, I was worried about coming to see you. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, why? She's like, I thought you might have been a serial killer. <laughs> and I was like, well, I could still be. I mean, if I get to relax enough, it's easy to, you know, dexter you or whatever. And I'm just making a small talk with her. And I was like, what got you over the hump? Like, because you scheduled the session online. She's like, oh, I watch like 10 of your YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it built trust. Yes. She could tell that I cared enough about my business to pick up my phone and press a button and educate people. That I cared about people in pain, that I was helping them with stuff. I'm $240 richer because of it. It's not, I make a video, I make money. Um, I have people now, because of the subscription service, they come around, <laughs> other educators come around and whisper here, passive income. And I was like, oh yeah, passive income. Because they think I just upload videos and money just pours in. And I'm <laughs> like, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I got to shoot video, edit video, process video, upload video, <laughs> like manage a Facebook group. It's like passive. This is back pay. <laughs> this isn't like, it's not like I'm sitting on the beach smoking a bowl and I'm like, yeah, I'm making money. <laughs> it's like, it just doesn't work that way. It's uh, a ticker tape of information. And that information is particular and special to you. It has your own energetic signature. In addition to making a simple goal like you make a video a week, do this. Look at other, even massage therapists, look at other massage therapists. Do this. Go to websites. Look at their websites. Figure out what you like and what you don't like. Make a list. Make a little, a, a verbal list. What did you like? What didn't you like? Do it to like five websites. Then those websites, do they have links to the social media? If you are a massage therapist and you don't have links to your social media, I don't want to talk to you. You don't exist. You're not a real person. This isn't a real business. This is a facade. But if I could follow you on Instagram, oh, and I see your Instagram story. So do you guys listen to Cardi B? Mm -hmm. I didn't know who Cardi B was until recently. He's laughing already. Um, <laughs> Sarah Yamada and I went down to Brownsville in McAllen. Uh, she helped me as a teaching assistant for a couple classes. And she was playing Cardi B in the car. And we were talking about entrepreneurship. And she's got women issues and whatever. You know, I'm listening to Cardi B, and she's like, oh, she used to be a stripper. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's hip-hop, whatever. And I listened to it, and I was like, oh, damn, this is pretty good. <laughs> Cardi B doesn't give a shit what you think. Um, I followed Cardi B on Instagram, and then Insta on Instagram and her Instagram stories, I think she has a baby. Mm -hmm. And she's like, kissing the baby, speak, don't you pretty as the baby? And I was like, oh, I was so like... Because I'm listening to this like dirty hip hop stripper, clear heels, doesn't give a shit, and she's like, "Oh, I need a baby," you know, or whatever, kiss the baby feet, and I was automatically like drawn, like I had a closer sense of like personality. Um, I saw Chris Rock on Netflix, and Chris Rock, uh, his net last special is called Tambourine, and he mentions his daughters, which he has in several comedy shows I've seen. I followed him on Instagram and his Instagram stories. He's like talking about his daughters and like they're going to like a store or something and it's like his daughters are spoiled rot. And they're like, Dad, I want this purse or I want this whatever. But the thing is, it's like I felt so much more connected to him as a person because he really got to connect with his dad now. Like dealing with dad stuff and having daughters in modern America. But do you see how there was a deeper connection? Like they've already got like a massive following but if you're willing to use photo and video, I think that social media is, is booming. And I think that people right now, this is what I think they don't see. 
There were people when the TV came out that said, it's a flu. Yeah. They're like, radio? Where it's at. Radio? <laughs> how we advertise. <laughs> and then they had a new platform with, with video. And what happened to radio? Yeah. Okay, so then we had the internet. And then we had YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, on and on and on, right? It's continued to grow and develop, and here's what I see. Currently, people are looking at, they accept Google, they accept Facebook. What do you think about Instagram? Like more than Twitter? Instagram's actually really good. Do they think of Twitter as an advertising platform? A way to make money, to reach customers. Snapchat. What do you think about Snapchat? What do you think about Twitch? <laughs> I think that what I see is I'll go to massage schools sometimes, and the people who own the massage school built businesses in the age of the yellow pages, mm -hmm. and they're teaching the same marketing. And I'm like, you have a goddamn phone that connects to everybody's goddamn phone on earth, and you're not using it? And they're like, oh, we don't really, yeah. We don't like it, it makes us uncomfortable. You know, it's like, how did you feel when email first came out? Were you nervous about it? When did fun? email first come out? <laughs> <laughs> Before you were shows born. Our age, shows our age. We wasn't talking about it. Makes all the older people in the room angry. <laughs> I think that people are basically devaluing it, and all of this social media is underpriced attention. Listen, I work out of my goddamn garage, okay? When you go back and look at my YouTube channel, I'm not lying to you. I teach, I noticed this the other day, I sent a video to somebody to work on their infraspinatus. I was wearing nothing except a black pair of like Speedo trunks. <laughs> and I look back at my marketing and go, dude, and I'm like, oh, wait, no, we didn't have any central air. I was doing Bikram yoga like three times a week. And I was wearing those trunks. And I was like doing yoga in the studio and I took an old flip cam and like set it up and made like my original video. So that was how I got started. Now, occasionally that video will float out and this woman wrote me and asked me a question. And after I answered her question, she said, thanks naked man. <laughs> I don't, like, I can redo those videos because I have a better idea of what I was doing. Because when I started, I'm like, I didn't, I, I just make a video. Like, I don't know what it, what it does. I, you know, I didn't have in my mind, like, search engine optimization. Like, I, didn't, I wasn't in that world at the time. But the, the platforms have continued to grow and develop. The reason why I'm on Twitch is I'm trying to understand a new platform. Because it's not even about the platform anymore. It's about the technology behind it. It's about the growing options that we're going to have, and I want to understand them so that I can maximize my reach. When I made videos, DVDs, workbooks, subscription service, dude, when we had subscription service, listen, massage therapists are still coming to me and going, what is this? And I'm like, it is the Netflix of massage education, because I have to figure out how to communicate, and they're like, I don't understand, what the hell is it? I'm like, it's an educational subscription service. And they're like, do we get CE credit? <laughs> and I go, yes, here's a carpal tunnel class. Merry Christmas. And we keep adding features and adding layers as the technology gets better. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. You start with like a single Facebook video. Feel it out. If you produce that stuff, here's what happens. Do you have a website? Mm -hmm. Do you have a blog? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have the capacity to have a blog on your website? Oh. Oh, okay. So, how, how many of you get nervous at the idea of making a blog post? Why? I've just never done it before and I don't read. Maybe I should start reading them. Do you, do you write easily? I've never yes. read one. Start, never start read there to see yeah. what you blog about. Seriously. Yeah. I do. I feel like I would be able to write make it. I'll make a simple blog post. Carpal tunnel relief. And I'll include a video and I'll write like a paragraph of text. It'll be like five sentences. Hey, I'm Robert. I help you with carpal tunnel problems. Just want to show this little video where I can talk about how you can help yourself at home. What did I sell? 
But if I'm a ticker tape of information, guess what you're more likely to do? Why do I run the time and size jam for five dollars for seven years? How many of you have heard of the time and size jam? How many of you talked to people who've been to the time and size jam? Say. And what happens when there's a time and size jam in every city in the United States? Oh. Take it over the world. Yeah, yeah. It's like you're trying to expand, but it can feel overwhelming at first. Just pick a single platform like Facebook. Notice what you like, notice what you comment on, notice what you share. How many of you like J.P. Sears? It's funny. Hilarious. Hilarious. Oh, man. He's like, he harpoons every, you know, thing. It's like vegans, crystals, Reiki, you know, it's like unicorns. Like, it's on and on and on. But he does it in a way like, why do we like and share his videos? Funny. Yeah. And the thing is, if I ran into J.P. Sears on the street, I'm like, no, oh, you're my guru for ultra-spiritual. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, J.P. can eventually monetize what he's doing because he can make t-shirts. He can start a podcast. He can, you know, uh, do like affiliate marketing and sales. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. For you, it's just getting your message out. And you have more tools to be able to get your message out than at any time in history. Huge reach. If you're not good on video, let's say you don't like video, put more posts. Let's say you like photos, you're a good photographer. Okay, use photos on Instagram, that's a perfect way. Make sense? Um, there's more complexity to it. Just start with a single platform and then sort of continue to build. Social media marketing isn't the only marketing as well. How many of you generally you don't want to deal with a website. You don't want to deal with social media marketing at all. How many of you were like, I don't, I don't like this conversation at all. Screw this guy. <laughs> so if you don't deal with social media marketing, how do we market what we do? Word of mouth. How do we get word of mouth? She proved my point. Because it is 21st century word of mouth in yeah. a way. What's she say? Facebook. Facebook. Oh. So what I did was I layered. I was like, well, I there's not really a place for me to do time massage, but what if I created a thing? That's what the time massage jam was. And then while I work on you for free, when you come to the jam, I'm like, hey, do you mind if I film this? And I'll set up my phone, press a button on, hey, I'm working here. What's your name? Joanne. Yeah, I'm working with Joanne here. We're going to work on her arm. Hey, it's, hey, nice to see you guys. Great. Great that you follow me on Twitch. Love it. Uh, and then I would work on her, now I'm doubling up. Because I'm not creating more work, I just set up a phone and press the button. Mm -hmm. But I can take that video, download it, put it on YouTube. <laughs> so it's like, it's not just this, it was video documenting and digitizing this for worldwide distribution. Make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Not to mention, the word of mouth, just from the technique in itself, you yeah. know, at the jam, I'm going to tell my friends and you know I mean? Word of mouth. But the word of mouth is also digital. You said at one point, I think, you said you couldn't quite afford my fee yeah. for like regular sessions. Yeah. So if you had contacted me and said, listen, I really need the work. Can you work with me? What, what do you think I would have said? Well, I didn't know what you were going to say, but you said yes. <laughs> yeah. I've never turned anybody away because of costs. And if somebody says, man, I, I can't afford 50 bucks, I'm like, well, Thomas Tyson Jones, five dollars. Now, normally what they do is they go, oh. But it's not like a full session. <laughs> I can see that. That's what I need to now. They're like, I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm closed today, but I have my jam coming up on Sunday, and it's 10 bucks, and I'll be happy to work on you. Oh, well, I was thinking more like an hour. <laughs> okay, I would love to book you an appointment for tomorrow when I have time. Oh, well, I'm like, you know what? Go somewhere. <laughs> so you contact me and say, hey, I'd like to get... Could I get a session a week? And I go, what are you dealing with? Mm -hmm. And I go, would you let me film the sessions? That's awesome. So you have a client. They need regular work. Right. They got. Uh, let's say it's a relaxation thing, because you, that's what you focus on is relaxation. Think about it. Think about it. We're stacking on, with the digital on top of the organic. We're stacking word of mouth and the digital word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And you say, listen, can I? Would you be okay if I had a videographer and I filmed like a 
portion of our session. You can just ask. Yeah. You'd have them sign a little AV waiver. It's easy to download, final Google. It just allows you to use the material. You get the videographer to cut little minute segments. Instagram. You take the full video, 10 minutes, put it on your website. Make sense? Yep. You give them a little bit of a discount, maybe. They need some regular work, but they're also the client you like to work with, and they look good on video or whatever. They're amenable to that situation. When therapists network in person, I think that's why a lot of therapists like chair massage. It's a quick sampler. It's quick. You don't expect to work on somebody an hour. In 20 minutes, they know whether they're going to work with you. You don't need to give them more than that. So the time massage jam was fun for me because I don't have to work on anybody. I've gone into the time massage jam, set up mats. I've been tired. I had two clients that day. Set up mats, fell asleep. I wake up an hour and a half in. I wake up, everybody's around me working on each other. <laughs> He's, I've been there when this has happened, so yes, it does happen. Um, okay. Question. In person, marketing, word of mouth. Go ahead. Um, I have my clientele, I really, I'll take new clients, but um, rarely. My clients could not afford um, a three-hour session from, yeah. from me. Um, how could, maybe I bring in a few people okay. at a... What do you want to do? I want to make a little more money so I can make a livable wage, but I can't take any more clients. Yeah. I can you need only to raise your rates. When you say you can't take any more clients, how many hours a week are you doing? I can only do two people a day. Okay. And that's, oops, I care for my mother. She has Alzheimer's and I have narcolepsy. Mm -hmm. And I can only expend so much energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I want. Are, are you, is your client base full? Pretty much. Raise your rates. How do you feel about that? I, I know all of them. I've probably worked on them for 10 years. Uh, they're teachers, retired teachers. Yep. And I'm in their shoes. I know they probably can't afford it. Or can't afford it. Okay. So how much are you raising your rates by? $5? Your clients can't afford $5. Oh, maybe they can. They can afford $5. They can afford, $5. They can afford $10. They can afford $20. Well, I charge... What do you charge an hour? To people that live in the city, uh, I charge uh, $55 for an hour and $70 for a massage. Raise your rates. Oh, mm -hmm. Raise your rates. Yeah. Raise your rates. Yeah. But that's so, out in the country. It, sure. But they're not going to go to right? So I'm going yeah. I'm gonna yeah. to let you in, I'm gonna let you in on what happened with me. So there's that, and so they've been working with you, so they know that you're not just, there's a good reason why you'd be doing this. It's yeah. not just because you're just trying to be greedy. And so. Yeah, no, no. As soon as you said you need to make more money, I did not hear. I need to invest in stocks and bonds. I need to make a little bit more money. Right. So I need to make a little bit more money. If you change your rates by $10 an hour, and I've been criticized for this on Massage Entrepreneur. I've had senior massage educators jump down my throat and say, you should see more people. I'm like, you see more people, I'm raising my rates. Right. Like, I, I only got so much yeah, time right. to sell, dude. You think yeah. it's about labor, it's not, it's about time. How many, how many hours, what's your hourly, make sense? If you raise your rate from 55 to 65, are some of those people not going to see you anymore? Probably they'll do whatever they can to find the money to come see Ten you. Ten bucks. Most of them. Yeah. Ten bucks. Most of them. Give them a warning. The one, yeah. yeah. So many months so it's going to happen. So here's what some therapists do. They say, okay, I'm raising my fee three months from now to 65 an hour. But I'll let you buy a package of 10 at 55 mm -hmm. yep. and you can make $550 exactly. selling one package. Mm -hmm. It depends on how you want to structure it. Yeah. When I decided what I wanted to do, then it was like, how do I create that client base? Mm -hmm. 
and I decided I wanted to work on chronic pain and people who could afford it. I don't like, you know, so like uh, somebody did this recently. I mean, this is, I mean, this is straight out. I'm going to tell you right now, this is going to be on the subscription service. Uh, is it Brandon? I think his, I think his name is Brandon. Brandon? No, David. David contacted me. I had a client come see me. She pays me two forty. dollars She's got an issue, but she can afford it. I, I think. I mean, she does. Um, then she said, my boyfriend was in a car accident. He's 25. Uh, the doctor's telling me he has fibromyalgia. He's on, uh, like, SSI sort of income. He's, like, he's like disabled, basically. Like, he's not working. And I, when she talked to me about him, I said, oh, well, um, you know what? If he's, let me talk to him on the phone and, like, see what he's dealing with and whether I think I can help talked to him on the phone, determined that he'd been in a car accident. Do I have a feeling for people who've been in a car accident? Yes. Do I have a f exactly. And I, he, he can't afford nothing. I'm like, just come on in. I'll give you a session. Nothing. I'm like, can I film it? And he's like, oh, sure, whatever. What, is it, what did it cost me to do that? A little time. Yeah. And the thing is, but I get to make that decision. If somebody called me and said, I know you normally charge $240, but I'll pay you $200. What do I tell them? Sure. Nope. <laughs> sure, but I can film it. No. Like, if they have a need and they ask, that gives me a, a power position to be able to make a choice about how valuable my time is at that time. It's not about, like, raking clients over the coals and trying to get the most money we can out of the clients. It's about a livable wage. Most massage therapists, on average, here's my guess, they don't make more than $35,000 a year. I'm on massage forums. I talk to massage therapists regularly. There's some who do it quite well. They're up closer to six figures, but that's few and far between. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. I wanted to ask you, how much you make? I don't want to put you on camera that way, on, on, on the spot. But yeah, it's like, there's a combination of massage therapists aren't really good at business and marketing. They sometimes don't like it because they think capitalism is evil. And when I think of capitalism, I think of like, no, I'm I build a business. Like that's capitalism, sort of. It's not big capitalism, mm -hmm. you know, which I think is what more more people have issue with. It's not it's not the individual guy starting a home and his a business in his garage. Like they have a problem with big capitalism, big C. You know, capitalism, the little C, is just you making enough money so you can take care of your family. And you said you have like parents you take care of. Yeah. They take time. Take money. What happens when you got no money? You feel like you have options? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we'll talk more about that. We'll have some more time tomorrow. I want to get back to doing some uh, some body work with you guys. Um, let me figure out how to move this. Do, do, do. about that stuff till I'm uh, nauseous. Um, if you ever want to do a Facebook Live like meeting or an interview or something like that, I'm happy to do that as well because we'll encounter those same issues just repeatedly again and again and again uh, with therapists who are trying to build their businesses. They're trying to figure out how to grind it out, basically. <clears throat> I don't think what we're doing replaces word of mouth. I think it expands it. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what it amounts to. It's not like getting rid of connecting with people in person. How many of you wear like a t-shirt to like the grocery store? I hear this one all the time. I never. <laughs> no, but like a t-shirt that's kind of like you're a massage therapist oh. or some sort of message. I know you I know you wear clothes to the grocery store. Like <laughs> so I don't do that. Um, I, I don't know what it is. Like, I think it's the nature of my work. It doesn't I don't know, there's just something about it. I like a degree of anonymity. I might be known in the massage community, but otherwise, like I can walk around in the way basically just like looks like my guy. <laughs> no big deal. Um, but we'll talk more about that. We we just we 
We covered upper back and neck. Mm -hmm. We dealt with some of that. What do you guys want to work on next? Yeah, glutes, glutes. Yeah, okay, back. so how do we work on gluteals? Because you guys already do a lot of gluteal work. When you guys deal with gluteals, do you um work on undraped glutes? Close on? Sometimes I have close on, yeah. yeah. Do you have a preference? Uh, I work yes. directly on yeah. drapes. <laughs> As a male therapist, clothes, uh, even more so if they were naked, like on top of blankets, sheets, um, I would work through that stuff. Um, I've, I've done undraped gluteal work before, but I don't have like a preference for it. Um, if anything, I've gotten so used to tie related work that I tend to think of close on as being preferable for a variety of reasons when it comes to mobility. How many of you are having problems with your gluteus? Tight. You need to work on your real quick? Sure. Can you just lay down face first and face rest? Mm -hmm. you put There's down a pillowcase or something if you got one? Can I use this one? Is this yours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can use that. That's my pillow. Yeah, you can use that. Clients come in, do they ask for gluteal work? No. Yep. no. Sometimes, yeah. When, when they have basic, like other problems, what are they having a tight, when, when are they having tight gluteals? What low problems back. would they look at? Okay. Typically low back. Low back. Yeah. It's almost always typically low back. Mm -hmm. um, they don't think of gluteals as being low back. Mm -hmm. um, I'll spend, if you tell me you have low back pain, here's what it looks like in my session. I'll say, lay down on your back. And they go, yo, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Doc, listen, I came here for back, and you're putting me. I'm like, trust me, I got 16 years of experience. Give me five minutes, right? Sometimes it's a little backwards. A lot of people that have low back pain don't realize that it's coming from here. Yeah. Could you guys spread across to the phone there? So if I came in and I said, hey, what's your name, by the way? Bevan. Okay, Bevan. Listen, are you having problems with your low back? Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. So this is normally how this would start. I'm still working on her upper back a little bit, still working on the paraspinals. I'm getting her used to my touch. I haven't worked with her before. I'm trying to see how she responds. A lot of people are so tight, their lumbar spine doesn't sneak around. It's just like rigid and solid. Doing this just as a gentle mobilization is something I really like. Even this people report makes them feel better. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in my case, she's she's clothed. I would probably come in here. How's this done? Good. Okay. How's that? Better. There. And now I can do both. And massage envy. I have one foot on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Is it too much pressure? No. Okay. If you had a choice, if I was there, or if I went just a little bit more lateral. Oh, man. How were you working before? Like the other one better? Yeah. There you go. How's that? Good. Okay. Now, how much work is this on my hands? Mm -hmm. right. Yes. And consistently, I can show you how to use your hands. There's no way you work glutes with your hands. I don't, I don't even teach that. Using your knees, how often do you guys do this? No, I usually yeah. use elbows. Mm -hmm. An elbow is fine. Here's the difference. Now what we've done is we've given you a shovel to go with your hand trowel. You guys have been digging a ditch with a hand trowel. Mm -hmm. You can do it, but it takes a good amount of long time. Your arm's going to fall off when yeah. you're done. Once you have the shovel and they say, you can't do this, that's where I would get one brand. Like, why are you giving me less tools? Yeah. How's that, Bev? It's good. Okay. Is more pressure like right there? Uh -huh. There. Now, what I did was I leaned in with my elbow to reinforce my knee. Mm -hmm. Is that too much pressure? No. How's this over here? That's good. Two points of contact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, my um, hip 
to me determines the amount of like downward pressure. We've got this guy down as low as it will go. I'm going to pull this over because in her case, I want to give her a little more pressure. So I'm going to step up. Find my footing here. How's that there? It's good. Is that too much? Okay. Is that better than before? Um, the pressure is not about the location. The pressure is at a different location? Okay. And sometimes it's the angle that I come in at. How's that right there? That's better. There we go. How's that? It's good. Now, I don't know if massage envy defines this as one foot on the floor. Your mileage may vary. I don't know how they do things there. Yeah. Is that too much? No. Okay. Now, if I put most of my body weight through my elbow, it should be able to take it. Yes. Here. Okay. You don't think she'd jump off the table? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. 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 Why can't she take this? Because it's broader. One of the things that I can't get people in the pain science community to actually engage in a conversation about is 